great candidates. I always love it. I am frequently mistaken for Dave Jones. I am just... <laughs> much, much more handsome. I'm hugely flattered. I'm not sure how you feel about it. So, please to report, I am not running for any office. Um, yet. Uh -huh. Bridget asked me to talk about a few things because I spent 11 years of my life in government, including being your controller, chief financial officer, but I also run a venture capital fund. We invest in things that are reshaping the future, like Tesla Motors, which when I invested in it, 29 people, warehouse in San Carlos, California, even my wife said, go get your money back. No one's ever gonna buy an electric car. <laughs> what I'm here to tell you is this. You all know that Donald Trump is the worst president we've ever had. From the crazy notion of building a wall to the increasing our military budget, $57 billion, to pulling the United States, the only country in the world not participating in the Paris Protocols, to his support for neo-Nazis. This is the worst president in United States history by far. But it is not enough to be part of the resistance. We have to also articulate a future, a vision of where our country and our party is going. And this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. I see business plans every day that are reshaping the world. And they all revolve around three things. Big data. The ability to get every amount of data on the planet instantly to make decisions, to figure out how to do things better, to track how your children are doing in the classrooms, what educational systems work and which ones don't. We see the Internet of Things. Literally 10 years ago, there were virtually no items on the Internet except for a few hundred thousand PCs. 10 years ago, there were over a billion smartphones connecting every person on the world. Three years after that, two billion. Cisco tells us by 2020, in three years, there will be 50 billion connections in the Internet of Things. Every car, every device, ourselves. It is a whole new world out there. I just talked to someone who was redoing their 20th year wedding vows. They went back to Africa, which is where they'd been. I said, how was it? I said, it was great. We went to the Serengeti Plains and they had the Maasai Warriors, the super tall on the plains of Africa. It was just like it was 20 years ago, but..." They're all holding smartphones now. <laughs> yes. And then you've got this thing called the Internet of Things. I'm sorry, the sharing economy. Because millennials are the largest buying cohort in the world. For 50 years, baby boomers, like all of our candidates, drove global politics, glo drove the global economy. But it's all changing now. Millennials are the largest buying cohort in the world. And we're living in a millennial future. And to be running for office, to be building a party, you have to understand the technology, the millennial mindset is changing everything. Think about this. Republican Party, registration, crashing down. Great. Democratic Party shrinking too. Who's growing? Decline to state. We can do better. We need a party that's speaking to issues of the future, specifically these three things. We need to fundamentally retool our educational system. We need to provide a curriculum for the 21st century, not just algebra, geometry, and trig. We need to be teaching app design, computer programming, the things that can help shrink the income equality gap in the future. We need lifelong job retraining using many degrees, things like Coursera to retrain people later in their life and we need to reimagine what infrastructure of the future looks like. The biggest gain you get from government spending is to invest in infrastructure. And that puts people back to work. If there's anybody in the building trades here, the technology caucus is your friend. But it's not just roads, bridges, and airports. It is universal broadband. So every child in this state, including those in East San Jose, East Oakland, and South Central, can be part of the global economy. It is things like self-driving vehicles. 
And by the way, it's going to put a lot of people out of work. The biggest job description in this country today, 3.7 million people, is driver. They could be driving trucks. They could be driving pizzas. They could be doing DHL delivery. There's a lot of people driving. Those jobs are going away, and we will not stop. But what we can do is do a better job of retraining our population to get jobs in the future. Creating jobs is what the Democratic Party needs to do. We ought to be talking about the new Democratic Party. This caucus needs to be articulating that vision to attract the next generation of voters to us. That is my challenge to you. Thank you for letting me come. Stephen, are you sure you're not running for anything? <laughs> well, well. Uh, we'll I mean, see. I vote for you for president right now, all right? Thank well, thank you. I talked to my wife. I promise you this. I will run again in the future. But uh, right now I'm launching two kids off to college, and what Jeff said is something I believe you don't get that day back. But I'm not too old. I'm almost as handsome as this guy. No, no, no. What the hell? <laughs> you, sir. You mentioned something. It's yeah. something that we keep skirting around in our narrative and in our dialogue. We are in a digital revolution, and what that means is a lot of the manual labor, a lot of the jobs that we have relied on in our industry are kind of autonomous. Yeah. There doesn't seem to be any clear vision of how we take that population, do we give them a basic income? Do we retrain them for another industry? No one is vocalizing, as you said, reimagining how we do that in California. That's a huge problem for us. So I'm just curious about your thoughts on that. Let me just say three quick things. First, the last presidential debate was a shockingly sad tragedy for the United States because instead of talking about how we retrain our workforce to be successful in the future, we're having silly arguments about walls that will never be built. We can do better. But the Democratic Party needs to realize you cannot put these technologies back in the bottom. They are coming. What you must do is get real about starting to teach kids from the earliest age things like app design, computer, and it's not that hard. There are new things like Ruby on Rails, Python. You can teach younger people these things to be job ready in the future. We need to do it. We also need to get more serious about accountability and education. California drags the national average down. We're not any less smart. In fact, we're the richest state in the country. But we need to have higher standards in education to be successful in the future. That is not always popular to say at a Democratic Party event, but that is the reality. But I want you to remember this one thing. When it comes to who is best positioned to do job retraining for their populace in the future, there is no country better positioned on this planet, the United States. Will it be comfortable? No. But we were number one for the last 50 years, largely because we leveled most of the rest of the world in World War II. It wasn't that hard. Now it's a flat world. The United States needs to reinvent itself, needs to reprove itself. If we get smart, this caucus should be at the forefront of it. We can do just that. One more question. Yeah, um Higher education, uh, job training is all well and good. California, correct me if I'm wrong, is 41st in the nation for expenses per capita for students. Um, don't we need people uh, that can think critically um, as, 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 and vote uh, in directions that are, that are uh, for the benefit of the country? Um, shouldn't we be putting more into just K through 12 education? So there's two questions here. Should we be putting more money in education? Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Anybody here want to say, I'm against education? <laughs> Zero. We need to get more in education. I get it. But you should also understand, so I've been the chief financial officer of the state. The Democratic Party, what we really specialize in, we want free education, free health care, free everything. I don't care who pays for it. We want it all free. You lose elections if you do that too much. I have run for statewide office in the state. The number one controversial issue not in Palo Alto where I live or San Francisco, but in those other 55 counties, you stand up and say, Prop 13 sucks, let's get rid of it. Psh, you're gone. People think they're overtaxed and they're not crazy. What we need to be talking about as a party, in my opinion, is to get beyond the false dichotomy of the Republicans saying, no more government, we're gonna drown government in the bathtub, and the Democrats who want free everything. That's why both parties are shrinking. What we need to be talking about is how can we take the money we currently have for education, which, by the way, is over 
41% of the state budget because of Prop 98, adding on another 12% for the community colleges, which is probably the single most in part, in part after preschool, and the state schools. We have close to 60% of our budget in education. And I would just submit to you, I am all in favor of more. I went to public schools, my kids went to public school, but the Democratic Party, if we truly want to see more government, we need to be talking about more accountability in government first. If the public believes you're spending money wisely, they will give you money. If they believe there's no accountability in government or education, they're going to be giving you less money. And I want to see us lead to bigger government by providing first more effective government. With that, there are plenty of great speakers behind me, and I want to give them their fair due, including this handsome gentleman.